Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 79. Here we are, ready to talk about men. Oh, God. You guys are really upset I didn't mention the episode number last time, and I'm sorry. I was just overwhelmed with the joy sparkle of it all. You know, I don't want to say that's what you get, but that is what you get for calling me out for not mentioning the episodes in our titles. So, Karma, she's a bitch. She really got me this time. <laughs> God, what an episode last time. I thought that was never gonna see the light of day. I was like, will we finish this ever in this lifetime? I don't know. You guys, I like, I recorded at least three other voiceover updates. You were gone for like an entire day. And I'm like, Lily, are you good? You're like, I'm just recording the alien part. I'm like, okay, well, period. <laughs> no, well, that's, I had recorded a bunch of other ones. And then I was like, well, we don't have time for this. And then I just left him out. So there's like some deleted scenes, but um, oh. actually I even, should we go over one of them really quick? It's really, it's very sure. short. It was me describing the TikTok monetization situation to like estimate how much money uh, Joy Sparkles is making. Sparkles or Sparkle? I think it's with an S, Sparkles, Joy Sparkles. Plural. Yeah, so she uh, reveals in her update that she gets 60 million views a month. I don't know if it's like consistently 60 million or if she said that it was just the first month, but at one point she got 60 million views in a month. I am not active on TikTok as many of you probably know. So I have no idea what the, like the, how you make money, like what the ad rates are and stuff. But I asked a friend who does. So she filled me in and she said that apparently you have to get accepted into like the creator fund program. Once you're in that, any view that is longer than five seconds, that is considered like a qualifying view. So that counts towards your money. So a lot of people, their view count for if you add all their videos together is gonna be higher than the amount than they're actually getting paid for. But the thing with Joy is that she starts every video off with, you know, a question, AKA like an absurd, just out of control claim that most people are gonna then stay around for. So I'd wager that most of her views probably count. So with that in mind, apparently it's like safe to say that the average, like it obviously varies from video to video. So sometimes you might get more, sometimes you might get less, but on average, it's around a thousand dollars for every million views. So I know we're not like great at math, but do you know how much money <laughs> I know, is? I was like, <laughs> well, you just said 60 million views. So that would be $60,000. Yeah, in one month. If she's part of that program, which we can't confirm. Well, she, I mean, she said she's making money, so she has to be. Oh, right, because that's the only way to make any money on TikTok is to be part of the creator fund. Yeah, so on the high end, that means that she made at least one month. Again, like, I don't know what her average is each month, but at least one month, her high end, she could have made sixty thousand dollars and like even if half of the views didn't count because also some of them like might get um if they're like sensitive content they don't count towards it but like even if you cut that in half thirty thousand dollars in one month i think that's what upset me the most is just her lack of shame in profiting or like benefiting even if it's just attention off of a case like this and then i kind of was clicking through her name today on tiktok and she did it too with the carly russell case she did like tons of videos on carly russell and she did it with she had said in the update i don't think i included it maybe it was um the first thing that she covered that like really blew up was the titanic submarine thing oh my god and that she did a ton of too so then i was like Oh, well, here's the thing. She sees what does well, and then she just runs it into the ground. But the reason she does so many is because she's basically like playing a numbers game where for every like five or six she uploads, or I guess every day she uploads, which is like up to eight or 10, I guess. Only one of them usually really pops off and gets over a million and the rest get like 20,000, 50,000. But one usually always is pretty good. And I don't think it necessarily matters that much on what she's talking about as long as it's on that topic. So basically she just has to do enough of them that at least one of them will do well. And then by the time you add all the rest of them up, she has a ton of views every month. The reason she has to make stuff up is because there literally isn't that much news to cover about one topic. She basically runs out of real things to talk about. So she just starts making it up. She's not really aware of what moderation looks like. She just kind of goes balls to the wall with everything. Yeah. Absolutely. But that's, uh, yeah, that was a definitely a disturbing tidbit of how much money she could have possibly made off of this one case alone. She is posting still currently. However, I was telling Lily, it seems like she kind of acknowledged she might've seen our video. I'm not sure because she did like emphasize in her last TikTok, like I'm saying if this happened, because if like she was like very much like I'm just speculating, Good. you know, even though she still started it with a very bizarre claim. So it's like really not you mean much with of a the difference. question. It just didn't sound. Yeah, like the one. question, the question. But anyway, that was a quick little Joy Sparkles uh, update. Today we have an episode where one of the topics is an update on good old Dr. Kenny Smiles because more shit and 
far more disturbing shit, even though I'm already thoroughly disturbed. I didn't think it could get worse. It's so much worse because now it's like you need to go to jail exactly. like that's it's where like, this where isn't creepy this is illegal yeah and he responded kind of so he did uh acknowledge someone that was talking about what was going on so he, he's very well aware and he's still posting his good old dentistry on tiktok much slower than he was before but he still is and then acknowledging people that are talking about it so that i found that interesting and then we're going to be talking about dax shepherd because that's a fun little tidbit. He has a podcast too. Did you know that? I did. Did you really before all of this? I mean, I don't listen to it, but I knew he had one. I did not know that. I mean, I I don't keep up with Dak Shepard. Like I see him in movies like once every five years. But I other feel like than that. the reason I knew is because I want to say he was, they like made a lot of headlines when it was, I think he had his wife, Kristen Bell. I think she came on and they like talked about their relationship or something, or maybe she wasn't even on and he was just talking about it. And it was something about like being, because I think he, I don't want to speak out of my ass completely, but I, I want to say he, I think he was like an addict. Yes, he was. He was an alcoholic and um, he's in AA from what I understand. Okay, so it was something about like trying to say that like not every relationship is perfect, but it came across as something kind of weird. I've always felt very confident in relationships. So I never, ever was like, oh, I hope I can keep Kristen. I was going, do I want to be with a Christian who has eight people living in her house for free, who has to get out of a car when there's a dog that doesn't have a leash and ruin her whole day to rescue this dog. Do I want to be? That's great, she's good, but I, that's not what I want to do. I'm not- And toxic, possibly? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I saw something on TikTok about that, but I definitely haven't kept up with them. The last time I honestly even thought about them was when that clip went viral on Ellen, where he surprised her with a sloth. Do you remember that? Oh my God, yes. And, and she, she just sobbed. <laughs> And Dax knocks on the door and he has a video camera and he's like, surprise, I want you to come on to the, are you all right? <laughs> and, and sees me basically fetal on the bed and I am. Um, I think you brought a little I footage did. of that. It's I can, embarrassing. I cannot it's, wait to see it's it. It's worth watching. Yes. It's embarrassing. So we can take a look. Oh, there's a little sloth. There one is. All right, let's watch the, the uh, oh no. <laughs> I wasn't joking. I was absolutely. Yeah, I found that very endearing. So that's the thing is everyone loves her. So it's kind of like, what are you doing with him? And I guess there's also been a clip where I think it was someone being like, oh my God, is it so amazing being married to her? Is she just like the funniest person ever? And he made some comment like, well, she's not like blah, blah, blah. And he like named a male comedian. That's all day. <laughs> yes. You laugh with him all day yes. and you laugh with her all day. I do. Not yeah. as much. See? See how he hesitated? Yeah. Not no, as much. I, just, I have a real commitment to the truth. Not all day. Uh, you're not Jim Carrey. I mean, <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> I don't live with Whoopi. I mean, look. Ew. Oh. Okay, you could have you could have just said yes. Okay, wait. So, do you want to start with Dax Shepard? Sure. Since we're already here. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that, and then we'll end with Kenny Smiles Grow, so everyone can have a horrible rest of your day. If there's one thing we've talked about on this podcast, it's how if you give a man a microphone for an extended period of time, something's gonna go wrong. Correct. They Correct. just can't help themselves. It's a very empowering thing. I mean, we you know we have microphones, and sometimes we be talking too much. Like I was it's just we really say, do. I mean, I think that's pretty much you give anyone a microphone and it could be a problem but we um... it's honestly not even the microphone thing what it is is that when you are on a platform of any sort and you are giving your opinion for an extended period of time you're gonna hit a point where the bullshit ends you can't bullshit it anymore people are gonna know your vibe what you stand for what you like you don't like because there's only so long you put on a facade when you're doing long form content like this like your opinion comes out you're the real you I guess well and not to mention like not everyone's always going to agree with you right yeah we know that yeah. yeah that's what we've run into he runs into more um showing his true colors yeah so i didn't really know anything about his like political stance no. his stance as a human being anything about him as a human other than just like he's kind of funny sometimes he's in funny movies oh my god i just had an epiphany how do you know who he is 
Like, what do you know him from? Not me forgetting every Dax Shepard movie ever. Ah, I don't know. Is he in movies? <laughs> what? What did you think he was? He's an actor. Do you want to know what I know him from? Oh, God, what? Punked with our good friend Ashton Kutcher. Just your letters sent to your various uh, production companies and whatnot that were never returned. And you have an outstanding balance of 904000 Ah, can, can you step inside, please, for a minute? The house itself has been seized, so it's now property of the government. We can't go inside, but... What? The house is worth... $8 million. Well, that's not for me to decide. An appraiser would probably disagree. I don't. I, I personally don't live in a neighborhood like this. I don't know what they're worth, but you don't have a paved driveway. You don't uh, landscaping. We got You're telling me somebody's that I, coming. I, there's a possibility that I won't get my stuff hey. back. If the fee is not recouped, we'll have to have a public oh, auction for this night. Dogs. The, no, the dogs are, are put in a government pound and they'll be taken care of. You took my dogs? Oh my God. Okay. I would be more surprised by that, but I just saw someone mention it on TikTok and I completely, like, I forgot it instantly. That, because I definitely watch like every single episode of that show and he's an actor in it. So he like plays the people that are fucking with the celebrities. Well, I think the reason why he was outed recently because these things that we're gonna be talking about are kind of scattered. They're not like all together, but they're all coming out together and like people are really scrutinizing him because he's outed as being close to Ashton Kutcher. There's more than one? Oh yeah, there's three different topics. Oh, I don't, I only knew about one. I knew the Taylor Swift conversation. No, there's Taylor Swift. There's him making Jonathan Van Ness cry because they talk about like trans stuff and he's such an asshole. And there is him talking and like basically normalizing essay. Oh, I, nope, didn't know about, I just heard the Taylor Swift thing. So, wow, I'm in for a ride. I think that did like popularize it just because like Swifties, you know, they mobilize. They they really, they really be <laughs> really talking bad about Beyonce. It's like, you just don't do it. Literally, there's no point in doing that. Your whole life is gonna be ruined. Um, And so it was. So all these things came out at once, but I think it was a mixture of the Taylor Swift conversation mixed with the fact that he was associated with Ashton Kutcher and all this controversy recently with Ashton Kutcher. So anybody close to you is like up for grabs kind of. And also Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell have paraded themselves themselves around as like these really wholesome people, much like Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, that are like relationship goals and like, oh my God, they're so sweet. I wish I had a Dak Shepard in my life. You know, that type of vibe. And when you look deeper into his thoughts and just like who he is as a person, he's very much- Misogynistic asshole. Yes, but I was gonna use a different set of words, but we can also add on to those words. Um, He is a professional contrarian, which is my biggest pet peeve. And I mean that with my whole soul. I cannot stand a contrarian that is contrarian for the sake of being fucking annoying. Like you don't have a strong stance. You're just fucking annoying. And you want to be devil's advocate. I was going to say, you just like to play devil's advocate to stir shit up. And the reason why they can do that is because they don't have any personal investment because they're not a part of those marginalized communities that they're speaking on. So it's just so fucking annoying. It's like such a pet peeve of mine. But anyway, the problem with that is not that he just has his own opinions and like, can't we have conversations anymore? Like, yes, we can have conversations. We can have hard conversations and we can have different opinions. But when you do it like Dax Shepard does it, it harms the conversation as a whole because you're not really doing anything with any integrity. Like I said, you don't have a strong stance on it because it's like a human right you believe in or like something that you're like, oh, this is like really personal to me and I really feel this way. You're just kind of like, well, what about this? I he mean, just huh? like throws it out kind of in passing and then like instead of having the hard conversation, then he kind of backtracks and then doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, and I think it's important to talk about people like this, especially people who have such large platforms like this because it's not to shut down conversations as a whole. I think that conversations are important. You know, we've gotten in trouble. I've said it on this show like gotten in trouble for exploring different avenues of like thought processes. And I don't like that. I don't like pushing someone down and being like, you can't feel one way and then change your mind later. Like you have to literally just know the right take from the beginning. Like. No, that's not how life works. You, haven't you ever been talking to your family members and you're just like, my God, you would be canceled in a second on the internet. Like you're just like- All the time. <laughs> but um, okay, I wanna start with the essay thing. Great start, right? Um, but he had Kelly Clarkson on his show. Can you believe this clip involves Kelly Clarkson? I was like so confused by all of it. No, I love Kelly Clarkson. No, no, she's great. She's telling him like, uh, dude, what okay. the fuck? Obviously not heavily because she's a guest on a show and it's kind of awkward and I totally understand that. But he also has a podcast host and I know nothing about her. I do know that she seems to be young. I don't really want to compare this to H3, but it's kind of like how Ethan's totally clueless and then Olivia's like, well, this is what the kids are thinking. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind yeah, yeah, of yeah, like yeah. that. His podcast host does that for him. She also does push back on him a little bit, which I like. So like, she's not like a super complacent, like, ha, 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 like pod, you know, kind of like, token woman podcast host. But it's very interesting because there's several times in the conversation that we're gonna watch right now where he should have stopped and he just doesn't. He just keeps going, even though two women are telling him like, eh, what? excuse me. I said I would never a hundred, I could a hundred percent promise I wouldn't go to jail for rape. 
unless I was being falsely convicted. But I know I can say that for certain that I'm not going to do yes. that. Although there I painted certain... a scenario. How? But it wasn't I would good. love to hear this yeah. scenario. Here's the, here's the scenario. <laughs> okay. The love of her life is Matt Damon. Luckily, he's been here and kissed her on the head. So, oh. that, so Matt's over. They're having some cocktails. He gets too drunk. He passes yeah. out. He's going to have to sleep here. Ugh. We shouldn't leave these shoes on him. Let's get his shoes no. up. No. You're oh, thinking like down. a dude. No, no. <laughs> exactly. That's what I said. No. I said I wouldn't even. Girls don't. I wouldn't even touch him. I know. You want to take his shoes off? No, no you got your. The, the love of your life is over, and he passes out. The love of my life at some point has been completely <laughs> drunk, and I've done that to him, and we still don't. You're on your you own. weren't finding it attractive enough to then kiss him. No, or well, that's not all I said. Was first the shoes would come off. Okay. You're like, okay, right. His shoes are off. He's <laughs> yeah. gonna sleep much better with these shoes off. Right. And then he's like, oh. No one wants to sleep in denim jeans. See, and they're so all... tight and uncomfortable. Yes, exactly. They're cumbersome. <laughs> He's going to wake up like, oh, get me out of these. Right now, it's all defendable. Then she removes. It's not defendable. It's it is. wakes up and his pants exactly. are on. Exactly. That's what Hold I on. said. She takes the pants off. Uh-oh. We didn't know Matt Damon is a raw dogger. He's riding. <laughs> He's you riding wrong. Commando? He's riding wrong. Okay. So wait. now when the pants come off, all of a sudden, now we're confronted with Matt Damon's pee pee. pee. I just sorry to interrupt but does he really think that like he's naked and then it's you can't control yourself well that's very much the vibe that he's giving off is like well what are you gonna do if there's like a wiener right in front of you kelly clarkson and this co-host are both saying we wouldn't touch someone who's sleeping and drunk if my husband falls asleep on my bed with shoes okay yes i'm gonna take his shoes off i'm not even gonna change my husband he's a grown-ass man if he fell asleep in jeans good luck to you my friend like what am i supposed to do about that he asked it's like that's such a normal thing I'm like no no he would sleep with his jeans on that's what would happen like and if they were passed out why like ew no what well that's very much the vibe that he's giving off is like well what are you gonna do if there's like a wiener right in front of you kelly clarkson and this co-host are both saying we wouldn't touch someone who's sleeping and drunk if my husband falls asleep on my bed with shoes okay yes i'm gonna take his shoes off i'm not even gonna change my husband he's a grown-ass man if he fell asleep in jeans good luck to you my friend like what am i supposed to do about that he acts like that's such a normal thing i'm like no, no, he would sleep with his jeans on. That's what would happen. Like, and if they were passed out, why? Like, ew, no, what? That's very much the vibe that Kelly and his co-host Monica are giving off where it's like, dude, we have no interest or like even thought process that would take us there. And okay, so the whole conversation before this was never say never because anything can happen basically. And then his co-host brought up the point like, well, I'm never gonna go to jail for our work. Like I could say that, like I would say that, you know what I mean? Or you would say that. And he's just like, well, you know, classic contrarian, like, but what about like, we didn't like, we don't need that. Thank you though. Literally the thought that a drunk passed out person, like that's not what gets me going. And if you even like, have I, the thought process that it is attractive, then you need help. Like right? actually, like, because that's I'm fucking so weird. confused. I'm like, no, I would like the person that he's like, but it's the love of your life. I'm like, yeah, but I would want the love of my life to like, you know, be present when it's happening. Anyway, but he goes on. Which is totally and gonna... appropriate to go near yeah. if he's passed out. Agreed. We're not going to go near yes. him, but she's going to stare for a while. Oh, my <laughs> love, we're getting more insight to you and less uh, about yeah. her. It is. It well, is. I don't feel bad at all because it's a dude. <laughs> uh, like, I wouldn't be able to have this hypothetical with a woman involved, uh -huh. but with a dude, if Monica takes his pants off and stares at his penis, good for him. Congratulations, <laughs> okay. brother. Let me high five you. Did he, he just say that he could never have this hypothetical because he would do... Like, is that because he's a man so this wouldn't happen to him or because he would do something? No, I think he's saying he couldn't have this hypothetical with a woman because he would be labeled as a predator as if it's not the same in reverse. And I hate this because it just perpetuates the idea that men cannot be essayed and that it's like yeah, they're they lucky can. if they have sex. Like, it's literally fucking disgusting but um that's what he's saying is like well if it was a woman laying there and a man staring at her that's creepy but if it's a woman staring at a man's privates while he's knocked out drunk, him, unconscious yeah. yeah congratulations he wants to give him a high five very gross so like this is not giving progressive king husband of kristen bell is it because it's definitely not giving anna from frozen if i was kristen bell i would be mortified but she's not because she's married to him and she knows very well what he thinks like, listen, do I think that you need to be married with someone who has the exact same views? No, I don't have the same exact views as my husband. I don't. I mean, we've talked about this. He likes the conspiracies, not like QAnon conspiracies, but he likes to like, oh, what's this and that? I'm not that type of person. I'm very much like, mm, no, thank you. We like to understand the other side. 
even if you don't agree with it. That is my husband. Now, I've explained to him, however, that there is a fine line between being a contrarian about something that's not affecting someone's life and then something that is. Like, I think that that's, if you want to speculate all day that the earth is flat, like, I'm just not going to cry about it. I'm not. Like, I was just like, okay, well, you know, period. I think that there's certain topics that venturing out into the other side is not dangerous. And it's not that you don't want to be informed on the other side. It's just that when it has to do with things like trans rights or, you know, anything like that, it just gets really dicey. So that's where I feel a little bit like, Ugh, like just off put by. But I think you could be married to someone that doesn't have the same views as you, for sure. And I know that Kristen Bell probably doesn't believe the same things he does, for a fact. Because, number one, she's a woman. The likelihood that she say, thinks like this is very low. not because of the political side, because of the gender situation, yes. But that's pretty much it for the essay one. There's a few more clips that I want to watch. One being the Taylor Swift one, because that's what... A lot of people are, I feel like people should be more upset about this, honestly, even though it's annoying what he says about Taylor Swift and he, it just shows his like misogyny and, you know, yeah, overall yeah, yeah. grossness. This I find really like, oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? I think this one may just not have been seen as many times. Yeah, I can't believe that this is a thing, like this is a real conversation that happened and that he tried to oh, yeah. engage in the conversation. Oh, it's a Spotify Kelly exclusive Clarkson girl, and another Still available like, right now. Oh my God. If I was Kelly Clarkson, I would have been like, please don't air that. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying she should have. I'm just saying I like- I mean, it's, she doesn't look bad, but- No, she doesn't at all. Do you want to know a fun little tidbit about Kelly Clarkson? I love her. Is this something bad? No, no, you'll love her more. Um, oh, okay, Perrin. <laughs> I had a friend that worked at uh, Disneyland and was one of like the VIP like tour guides. And she gave Kelly Clarkson her, like she was her guide for the day. At the end of the day, Kelly Clarkson was like, oh my God, I have a show tonight or this weekend or something. You should totally come. And sometimes I know when that happens, actually, I think you have experience with this, that sometimes that happens and the person doesn't necessarily follow through. Kelly Clarkson followed through and she got like front row seats. <gasps> oh my God, what a queen. Yeah, a lot of times celebrities will do that and then you go to the show and it doesn't happen for you. <laughs> I don't know how I know that, but I do. Anyway, so, okay, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Fun fact also is that Kelly Clarkson actually is the person that suggested to Taylor Swift that she re-record all of her um, albums oh, and do the Taylor's version. I didn't know that. That was like Kelly planting that seed. So thanks, Kelly. Okay, so let's move on to Taylor Swift where they have a conversation about, what do you think? I, oh, wait, you've seen the clip? Yes. Oh, fuck. I was going to ask you, what do you think they have a conversation with if it has to do with Taylor Swift? She has so many boyfriends. I am so fucking sick of that tired ass shit. Why do people insist on like being hyper fixated on who women are dating, especially when it comes to women like Taylor Swift, who yes, writes songs because she is a singer who writes songs about relationships she's been in. Do you want her to like legitimately like not write songs about her relationships? All songs are about relationships. That's the thing, It's but a lot of other people I think don't necessarily write their own music, so it's not automatically assumed that it's about them, so there's not as much speculation. Well, that's why I like this clip because it's putting John Mayer and Taylor Swift against each other when they are both the same person, where it's like you both have dated a lot of people and you both are talented songwriters who write about it. The difference is that John Mayer has a reputation for being an asshole and that he had, like all the Swifties hate him because he was like way, way older when he was dating Taylor Swift and she was like just an innocent little. She was a teenager, right? I think she was 19 or something. She was 19 and he was 32. I am 33 right now and the thought of dating a 19 year old is like, <laughs> no It's thanks. weird, is it illegal? No, but it's a weird, yeah. Everyone can agree on that. But anyway, okay, so this clip is about that. It's basically about how Dax Shepard feels some type of way about Taylor Swift writing so many darn songs about people that she's dated. And I don't want to trigger any defensiveness. This is a sincere question. Yeah. I want your real answer. Of course it is. Of <laughs> it okay. always is. Why does everybody hate John Mayer yeah. for having dated every famous person? Just gotta stop him right there. That's not why everyone hates John Mayer. <laughs> Another thing, it's like not everyone hates John Mayer. He's not this like pariah that has been like exiled from society. And he absolutely is a Libra who is just a fucking hot mess with women and just all over the place and is a dick to everyone. But I don't even know like completely the narrative other than just the general notion that he's an asshole. Yet no one hates Taylor and she's dated every famous person. Why do you think there's a huge difference? They hate John Mayer because of Taylor. It's mainly the Swifties. He, oh. he he dated her. I'm surprised they didn't stick together because they have the kind of, they both are. What? Well, they both love dating the 
you know, getting at every famous person. When I think of Taylor Swift's dating life, I don't think of her dating like every famous person. I mean, she's dated a lot of famous people, but she's also extremely famous. I mean, her last boyfriend, Joe, or, you know, they were together for like five years or something. He was an actor and stuff, but he was much less famous than like anybody that she's dated before. Taylor Swift doesn't need to date someone for status by any means. It's again, it's a community thing. It's like the people that you're around. Like when yeah. I was on Vine and very present on Vine, I dated a lot of Viners because like they're the people you're around all the time who get what you're doing. Exactly. And not to mention that like, especially if you're as successful as Taylor Swift, a lot of people are going to be threatened by that kind of lifestyle unless they have some kind of that success like on their own. His whole like, yeah, they just date every famous person. Like what? I don't know. I, she's been like more famous than they are though. So it feels like not a concern. I don't know. Okay. That's also not fair because a lot of people who are famous date famous people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like it's And others collect it. But not, I was like, she's dated probably as many people who are famous as you have. But oh, she, no. I think yeah. she's far surpassed. So. <laughs> no, I don't I, think so. She just, her circle. songs are about them so we know more. But I know yeah. a lot of the, I know who you dated. Some of the funny business. I know you've dated. You've dated a lot of famous people. But I will admit that I was attracted to that. Now, there's other people like Amy Adams who's- <laughs> Wait, what? He'll admit that he was attracted to the fact that they were famous? I genuinely don't feel like Taylor Swift is dating the people she dates because they have celebrity She's status. either always equally as famous or more famous than the people that she's dated. So what are you even talking about? That wasn't a box that she's checking off. No. It just happened to work out that way. I agree. Adams, who's not out, you know, she's not date heartthrob movie stars. That's just not what she does. Right. And then there's some of us that do. I'm not throwing rocks in a glass house. I'm admitting oh, I, I too. Oh, okay. So I'm just saying those two but seem no to be one apex hates you success for at that. it. No one hates you. Well, for people that. did hate me for that. That's what that that's exactly what, what that thing on the wall you're looking at is. People don't like that I was with famous people because I they didn't think I was hot enough. What? I don't remember that. I mean, maybe it's true. I just, I, again, I don't keep up with him. I don't remember that. First of all, Amy Adams? What? Like, that's such a random person to bring up. He brings her up again, I think. Has he co-starred with her on some? Like, that's such a weird... I don't know. And she's an actress that's much more private about her personal life, too. So it, I don't... I think it's interesting that I do think for the many stereotypes for gender mm -hmm. that, you know, women are slut shamed and that's definitely inarguable. That's the truth. I do think it's interesting that it's a weird reversal. I don't know all the details of what people don't like about John Mayer. I know I know Swifties hate him. That right, I know. Yeah, but I yeah. don't know about anyone else who hates him. Yeah, I do. And not from Swifties. Oh. <laughs> but everyone loves all the women love that Taylor. And I love it too. I just it's just Interesting. I think it's interesting. I don't interesting. know that people love like, it. I think if a guy is banging a bunch of people, at this point, he's going to take a lot of heat for that. Like I don't even, like, how does he say these things and not realize how it sounds? Like, first of all, Taylor Swift isn't out here banging a lot of guys. Like, well, the example he brings up is very telling to me. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. These if he's dating, like, ding. young girls. Sure. That's normally where this stuff starts coming into play, what people are mad about. Yeah. John Mayer is in that category. Right. Leonardo DiCaprio is not hated on because he bangs a lot of chicks. He's hated no. on because every single girl that he's dated, he dumps by the time they're 25 because he wants them to be young and he's a freak for that. That's weird. He's over, how old is he at this point? I don't even fucking know. That's even both of these examples. Why are you, Amy Adams and Leonardo D DiCaprio, like, what? Random examples to begin with. And also, yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio, it is nothing to do with the quantity of women that he's with. It's the age. Yeah. If you date one woman and you're in your 40s, nearing 50, I think at this point, and she happens to be in her early 20s, just turned 20 and then whatever, that's fine. But when it's every woman and it's literally a trend to track the women you date because you dump them by the age of 25, that is fucking weird. It's like you have a weird like standard where you only want to date very, 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 very young looking women. Is it illegal? No. But can people still realize that that's creepy and weird? Yeah, because literally the older I get, the more I realize how much I don't have in common with guys that are of legal age. But like, if I was single and a 19 year old came by me, I would be like, ah, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio, it's weird because it's consistent. But and Jennifer Aniston was much older than him. So that's kind of cool. That's true. Yes, right? 
No. Yes. Yes, they did. Okay, you need to know your John Mayer lore. But that's also like, I don't know if Leonardo DiCaprio ever has, but it'd be like if he dated one person that wasn't young. And then you use that as your like confirmation bias to be like, no, he doesn't always do that. He had this one girlfriend. Also, like Taylor Swift is actually in relationships with these people that he's like and these famous for people a long he's time. To. Like at least a year a piece. Yeah, it like, like it's not like she's like jumping around from guy to guy. It's like no. she has long term relationships with them. In his eyes, she's just going around banging people. It's like, okay, well. Exactly. I'm like, that's not what she's even doing though. Like, what? No. Seems to be common for Leonardo DiCaprio, which is why people talk about it. Mm hmm. I think that's a John Mayer thing too. It Very is. Young. That's well, but sweet. Jennifer Aniston's older. Oh my yeah. God. But I think but it's normal. like uh, Kiernan. I think he's dating her now. Oh. And she's like 21. Oh, Kiernan Shilpa. Yeah, Shipka. the uh, madman child. Leonardo child DiCaprio is dating Kiernan Shipka? I couldn't tell if they meant Leonardo DiCaprio was doing that or if John Mayer was doing that. Either way. Who is that? And why do you know who that is? I don't even, she was, I feel she used to be in like a Disney show or something, but she's- You just said her name very clearly. I'm like, are you a Caroline Schilpe fan? No, because I just think of her as being like a child. Now, or not now, but- Easter egg. Before, you would be kind of searching for who is this about. Mm, yeah. Sometimes it was more obvious, like style. Sure, <laughs> she wasn't very- no. And Dear John. Opaque about that one. Who's John? Who's John? <laughs> what, the, are the you my dad? This conversation about like, I are you? Was that supposed to be a joke or? Who's John? Mayer? John Mayer. Yeah. Okay. And Jake Gyllenhaal. No, Jake Gyllenhaal. To be fair, how it, many and, more are there? there so the, the, that's what. See, this feels a little because, like, again, that's three. Okay. Three people of fame. Uh huh. There's a bit of stuff here. Well, let's hear it because I. Them. Harry Styles. Yeah. Joe Jonas. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Joe. Yeah. Joe Jonas was when she was like a teenager. That like this is over the course of like a decade. That's literally what I was about to say. Like, do you want to pull up my dating list over the course of a decade? And I've been married for six years. It would still be bad. Like, what are you talking about? And like, what his co-host even brings up is like that he's dated famous people, and he's like, oh no, not as many as Taylor. It's like, wait, well, but you were private about them, so it you're not letting it be like a talking point. But just because hers were public and she was in again long-term relationships with them, like no. No, that's not why she gets penalized for it. She fucking gets scrutinized because she wrote the fucking music and people cannot stand that. They literally are like, how fucking dare you? When my brother Joey is an indie artist and he doesn't really profit off of his music. He just mainly like he wants to one day, but he mainly like writes now because he just loves it and he loves to record music. The majority of his music in his last two albums are all relationship stuff. Like people that write is love what songs. artists write about. Well, it's not even love songs. It's about breakups. It's about what you learn from them, who you became as a person, how you evolved. Like relationships are such a key part of our lives in general. What do you want her to write about? Like a cockroach on the floor? Like literally what the fuck else is there to write about? If I were to sit down right now and write a song, I would have to go back into like my dating mindset and think about like those feelings that that brought up because what am I supposed to write about? My kids crying? You write songs about things that are emotional and that's like something you, relationships are something you experience a whole spectrum of emotions in. No, no, she should just write about Sunday brunch and uh, that one time she went to the farmer's market. Like what the fuck do you want her? I'm so annoyed. It is such a like annoying take because if she was to do that and be like super fucking boring, everyone would have a, a severe problem with that and her career would be over. I'm trying to think of even like examples of songs that are not about some kind of relationship and like Taylor does actually have a few about like her parents. She wrote one about Lena, uh, Lena Dunn, is that her name? What? Lena Dunham. Yeah, what about her? You know Lena Dunham, right? Yeah. And I know she she's like very controversial person, yeah. especially at this point. Uh, but she was very close to Lena Dunham and Jack Antonoff. They were dating and so she wrote a song about their, about their love. Yeah, about their relationship. Otherwise, like the only examples I could think of would be like, and I think it's more common now that people might write about like anxiety or like mental health kind of things and like what they're experiencing. But for the most part, I would say 90% of songs are usually about relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just such a weird take, but basically the entire video, it goes on and on and on of this segment of the podcast. He's just saying the same thing, like Taylor Swift dated a lot of people and John Mayer too. And it's just like, he keeps going like, I just think it's interesting. I'm like, well, that's code for you think she's a slut? Like, I don't understand. Honestly, I'm telling you, that's contrarian talk. It's like, I bet it is interesting for you because literally they revel in this like weird, like everything's just 
interesting. Like, let's just explore it. Like, I don't know. It's just so fucking pretentious and annoying. And it seems like just what he's looking for is just for them to be like, yeah, Taylor sucks. And it's like, no, no one's going to say that. I don't know. But there is one more uh, clip that came out. And this one was with Jonathan Van Ness, uh, JVN Hair, I think is the name of their company and they were Queer Eye, Queer Eye yeah. and yeah exactly so they were on Zach Shepard's podcast and it went not great because as you can imagine contrarians are very fun to talk to about trans rights Jesus why would they just find it interesting Lily no but why would he have them on if he's gonna be a dick like because he's not being an outright dick of like what the fuck are you know like he's covert, being contrarian like... and the thing is what's really frustrating to the people like how he was just speaking about women and then we get very triggered and you know when you're part of the community that someone's talking about and they're just speculating and they're having a regular Tuesday where they're just trying to figure out oh well what's going on like let's just figure it out it just is a such a lax and almost offensive approach to something that is far more serious and actually affects lives and then when we're talking about like trans rights and communities that Jonathan has spoken up for and is a part of that's very very frustrating and can be really really triggering to someone to have just like this I don't know how to explain it but I feel like these contrarians want to have this like really calm conversation about something that's really emotional and can be triggering and instead of like also respecting that they just want to be like well, why can't we just talk? Like, like because you're being incredibly offensive. Yeah, like let's not speculate or low key spread misinformation about a community that is very damaging and has a lot of ripple effects. Let's not do that all in the name of having a conversation. I don't love how you're framing it right now, which is if the right was educated, they would pick our side. I reject that. They are conservative. They don't like how quickly the country's changing. I understand that. I can sympathize with that. They have different fears than we do. It's not because they're dumb or uneducated. They have a difference of opinion. No, I think that misinformation and disinformation plays a huge role in that. So it's a big spectrum. On the very far right, let's say you would say, my support of trans folks would include them competing in the Olympics. That's the far end of the spectrum. On the very far other end of the spectrum, you have people saying they're not entitled to these rights. They shouldn't be allowed to transition. There's this huge spectrum. I don't think that the entire news organization is no longer left leaning because they fall off on one area of this spectrum. How you do anything is how you do everything. And the issue of it not being fair, or lack of fairness, your explanation is, well, there's other things that are unfair. I would say, then let's fix those things that are unfair. Let's fix the socioeconomic problem that prevents certain people from having access to these things. Yeah. Do I wish that the trans woman athlete had access and could play and follow her dreams? I do. Will I elevate her rights over women? We're pretending that women aren't the ultimate marginalized class throughout history. People who have written cervix have her. And she goes, no, 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 there's a name for us. You can't steal my identity to help your cause. You can't take away the defining characteristic that allows me to relate to all these other women who have been oppressed. Now, there's hate mongers. There's people that fucking don't like trans people. We're not talking about people with Kleinfelters. We're not talking about people with chromosomes. What people are questioning, which is, could the captain of the water polo team that was male for 19 years next month or in one year compete against girls and women? Would that be fair to girls and women? That's a fair question. Sure. I appreciate what you said. There is a few things. Little girls who want to just be able to like join a dance team with their girlfriends in Iowa or be able to play golf or figure skate without cheerleading. I probably would have killed myself in high school. And I sometimes really wrestle with my gender identity. Like, I'm not sure that I am not trans. And there's been 500 bills this year alone in the United States that target trans kids, whether that's gender affirming care, whether that's bathrooms, whether that's sports, there isn't legitimate questioning going on. There is like a public targeted onslaught towards queer people. There are many people targeting queer people. Don't want them to have rights. I agree with you. I don't, don't have so those opinions. So then for me opinions. to sit here and watch Zach Shepard parrot a lot of the same things. No, and one of the issues. But also, I don't know how often it's happening. In the state of Iowa, there was zero trans athletes 
And actually, I think in many of the states where trans athletes have been banned all the way through high school, there have been it wasn't no even trans issue. athletes. It's a boogeyman to make us feel that our girls are being attacked, that their things are being taken away. The whole trans debate can really be boiled down to this. We're coming from a place of scarcity and not from a place of abundance. There is enough for everyone. We've been told by colonialism, by white supremacy, by the patriarchy, that there's not enough for everyone and that there is always a boogeyman. And now we are really looking at queer people. And it does hurt my heart to see people who I respect taking up for positions. But really, the thing that I'm bummed about right now is that if you wanted to lay out your points where you'd say this would make you supportive of the movement, and you laid out 10, if I'm along for nine of them and not the 10th, you file me in this enemy category? I'm not or- filing you in an enemy category. Have whatever beliefs you want. Go for it. I'm just saying that it is disappointing when you realize the amount of people, they think they're really fighting for something. A lot of people have a lot of concerns about kids, young people making any sort of transition, anything, whether that's a hormone blocker, whether that's a haircut, whether that's a pronoun change, whether that's a name change, whatever. But there's a lot of vitriol around hormone blockers. Right now, there's a lot of legislating. That's what all of these anti-gender affirming care bills are that are like in Nebraska, Texas, Arkansas, Florida, North Dakota, South Dakota. They limit anyone's ability to access gender affirming care, which can be hormone blockers. So the International Skating Federation, who talks about sports and also, you know, even your argument earlier with trans inclusion in sports, is if you've lived as a man for 38 years and you've gone through a puberty of a biological male, no amount of estrogen is ever going to allow you to be able to fairly compete with women. First of all, 38-year-olds aren't going to the Olympics to compete with 23-year-olds and transition at 38 and then go try to make the Olympics. If it was, it'd be someone who's like a little bit younger, who's still in their prime and whatever. But let me finish my point. On the one, it's like people are like, well, if you've gone through a puberty, then you definitely are never going to be able to compete with women because that's not fair. If you've been through an irreversible biological thing, well, you can't play sports because that wouldn't be fair. But then on the other hand, we have all these other people that are saying, well, even if you know you're trans and even if you've been living as a little girl or a little boy and your family supports you and your mom and dad say that's okay, and the doctors are agreeing with you and you didn't get on hormone blockers on the first time someone saw you, you've been having therapy for years. You've had an endocrinologist. You have a whole team of experts who are like, yes, this kid is fucking trans. We need to get them on hormone blockers. Yeah, yeah. That little girl loves to run. That little girl loves to do figure skating. Maybe she's into sports. Yeah. She's been on hormone blockers forever. Well, in these states, she can't do that anymore. So like in Iowa, for instance, literally Kim Reynolds is like, if your kid is on hormone blockers or on hormones, either you got to de-transition or you got to move because it's child abuse now. So get the fuck out of here. Oh, wow. That's what they said in Iowa. That passed? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Those things are happening. I've had several trans friends, one of whom was held down by police at the Austin State Capitol who since moved to San Diego because they are so fearful to live in Austin. Those are people who I know like in my personal life. I'm not reading about it like I live it because I live there. So do you see what I'm saying? How If a little kid is trans and they want to play any fucking sport. Now, I also don't think that all sports are the same. Yeah, I don't think I that agree. like I don't think that tackle football is the same as figure skating. And I also think for certain sports like figure skating, being a man isn't really help like anything that makes you bulkier, makes you spin less fast. You know, balance beam, for instance. Yeah, like, yeah. Gymnasts. Floor there are routines, certain so. things that will floor routine. You know, that's like a little more power. But the point is, there is a gigantic spectrum of ability within women and men. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I once had someone say, if trans women were allowed to transition, we would have never had Serena Williams because the 10,000th best man could have transitioned and beat Serena Williams. I just like think, how little do we think of women's athletes? I don't think that the 10,000th ranked male tennis player could beat Serena Williams a week after she had a baby. Conservatives do need a boogeyman right now. They need a scapegoat. Well, I definitely think a lot of people who are anti-trans are using this as a Trojan horse. Oh, absolutely. thousand percent. If you and I can't have a conversation about it, who I think are well, I do both think we well have to be. Touch. Well, we are, but we have to be careful. I'm a non-binary fucking trans person. You know, when I talk to my dad or people who say similar things, it's hard to be cool through that. I just get a lot of little kids who don't get allowed to like join groups. I was really bullied for my gender expression as a little kid. Yeah. And there's a lot of little kids who aren't going to go be Olympic gold medalists. They don't want to fucking go to the Olympics. One thing about this conversation that's interesting is I think it's also relatable to a lot of people, like I said, who have family or someone that has an opposing view or is very like contrarian or just feels the need to put in their two cents where it really doesn't apply or isn't very useful, where a conversation can start off very friendly and you're like talking and you're just like kind of shooting the shit and you're like, oh, okay, 
whatever. And as soon as it gets to like real nitty gritty topics, it, it gets so uncomfortable. And that happened really quickly in their conversation. Yeah, I was gonna say, I didn't even fast forward that far into this and it was already starting. Yeah, they honestly, they were just having a regular conversation and it really quickly turned into a debate about trans rights. And then I've seen a lot, I'm not saying Dax said this, but like a lot of people want to talk about the drag queens and like all that stuff that although there may be a tiny, tiny percentage of cases that maybe you could bring out that a drag queen did something once. It's not because they were a drag queen. It's because they were a pedophile or whatever. That's what I get annoyed at. I'm like, that isn't representative of the entire community. That's the thing is it's always brought up in a way that like data wise doesn't really match up. Like if we're talking about yeah. how many drag queens or trans people go into restrooms to hurt children, the percentage is if not zero, so low, it's hard to be Jonathan in this situation, to be a part of a community that is not only marginalized, but just stereotyped based off nothing. Yeah. And attacked honestly by misinformation of bullshit like it's like if there's one gay man that turns out to be a, a p word one day then it, it's confirmation bias that it's like yep and they will you. run with it and they will say that all gay men are pedophiles and it's just fucking it's very damaging that's why i think jonathan got so emotional in this conversation and he just got to the point where it is like he said I'm so tired. It's tiresome. It's because they're having to have these debates about things that aren't worthy of the time to debate. Like you, you don't, that's not a, issue. Why are you dwelling on that? The entire kind of villainization of the LGBTQ community is something that has been around forever. If you go back to the 80s, pretty sure that there was a specific court case that it was like a daycare, that there was gay people working there and they claimed that those employees had like molested all of the kids. And that wasn't true. But they literally brought them to court and all the it was like everyone had their pitchforks ready to go because they wanted to attack them for something, but it was never rooted in anything real. Well, and that's the thing is that when you negate the history there and how gay, trans people have been at the center of conspiracy theories that have no kind of basis in reality. And it is just rooted in pure homophobia. And again, it is not to say that there's not a drag queen out there, one or like two or 10, I don't fucking know, that have done something wrong in their life. I'm sure there are, but I'm not like, it's so offensive to take people that are such like, it's not even like, oh, it's just a small, it's literally the smallest percentage of a community when the vast majority are not participating in those activities and demonize them all as and a And not whole. only not participating, but then I feel like they don't take into account that they're doing things like against it. Like that they're the ones that are championing for the opposite of what they're getting villainized for. What rings like in my head where I'm just like, okay, that's interesting is that even people who center their entire stance against protecting children, which we know is a very like right wing kind of like talking point, right? It's like weird how they've fixated on children, but it's also not that weird when you look into things like the movie, The Sound of Freedom, when you see one of the like main funders of it was arrested for like doing something with children. That seems like it's always the case. It's like they're championing against the things that they're participating in. There is a time and a place to have conversations you want to have about anything, right? So there's going to be people who are like, well, can't we just have, again, yes, we can have conversations. We can have opinions. We can have differing opinions. But when you see someone that is part of a community that you're speaking on that you are not a part of in front of you, like you need to read the fucking room and understand when your devil's advocate little play that you like to do is not needed. And I think it wasn't needed here. You didn't need to make him fucking cry. You didn't, like you saw he was getting frustrated halfway through. We kind of cut this out because we watched it and then now we're going to watch it again. But Jonathan gets upset and we're going to watch that part um, where it kind of all comes to a boil. I wanted to come like chat about my podcast. Like, other yeah, stuff. Well, we're like, going to do that. We're going to do that. I did not intend at all to get into a debate with you about this. I didn't want that at all. I adore you. I think you're hysterical and talented and I love that you're an activist. I could just like cry because I'm like so tired of having to like fight for little kids yeah. because they just want to be included. I wish that people were as passionate about little kids being able to like be included or grow up as they were about fictitious women's fairness in sports. I have to tell you, I am very tired. Yeah, so it came to a boiling point and then it, 
it got aired and um, Jonathan did post on Instagram. Well, Dax posted to promote it as if nothing was wrong. And it just says, I've been a JVN fan since Gay of Thrones. Jonathan even convinced me to buy beard oil and green tint moisturizer and it tags the podcast. So Jonathan posted on Instagram stories, the like screenshot of the episode from Dax's podcast. And they said, I don't quite have words for this yet, but I will someday. So it's clear that it was emotional. Probably more thoughts are there. Again, it's not that people can't have conversations about things like this. I think that it's just, if you're not a part of the communities that are affected, be very, very cautious in the way that you navigate them. You're a celebrity. You're having a conversation that other people are going to take as validation for the thoughts that they have that may be very negative towards a certain community. So if you are going to shine a negative light in any way, even if it's a small one on a marginalized community, just know what you're doing. I think that Dax again, I mean, the last clips I think were very like intentionally like he was being a fucking dick. I don't think he was being a fucking dick intentionally to Jonathan. And they think that they can have the conversations, but like suddenly take that person they're talking to out of it. So it's as if like, well, you know, I don't mean this. So, and I mean, having a brother who's gay, who also has the same family as me, who some people are not outright homophobic, but are very conservative and have those contrarian views. It's been frustrating to watch my brother kind of just struggle with family who's just like, well, we're just talking. Or like, why do you have to take it so serious? It's like, because it affects me. And then they'll reply, does it actually affect you? Like, I haven't seen anything happen to you. And th like that, it's just very frustrating. They for the separate them from the conversation. Oh, 100%. And that's how they think it's like not offensive. Exactly. Because they don't hate that person. They're all good. But anyway, that was a very, it was not supposed to be that long. But that was the like brief look into Dak Shepard and what he's been up to lately. Fun times. I'm sure because I haven't kept up with the podcast i'm sure there's going to be more shit that comes out of the podcast and also i'm curious to see if there's any like problematic punked uh content that comes out probably yeah probably. i mean he could probably excuse most of it because he was acting yeah in it, but uh <laughs> but anyway we will very quickly give you a dr kenny smiles update because there somehow has been more shit and it's gotten worse and we will cut to our girl becca day because uh she obviously explains it a lot <laughs> a lot better than us and far more concise because god knows we can go on in one but she put I think three parts up about the latest updates of Dr. Kenny. I don't know if she was the one that posted originally that a couple weeks ago we even saw that he apparently was once arrested for um prescribing far too much opioids when first of all that's not really even a medication that a dentist should prescribe but also he was prescribing it to friends and himself and yeah, yeah well and it's like the amount that dentists are allowed to prescribe or supposed to prescribe is so small because it's never like a long-term recovery situation all right we've got more on dr Dr. kenny smiles lots more trigger warning for this video because there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here that's really really difficult to watch just things first this was Dr. Kenny's mugshot from when he was arrested on fraud. Kenneth Willstead, bigcountryhomepage.com in Texas, reports Abilene dentist arrested for fraud for overprescribing medications to friends, patients, and himself. Local dentist has been arrested for fraud for allegedly overprescribing medications to friends and patients, as well as using another dentist's DEA number to obtain medications for himself. According to an investigation conducted by DPS, Abilene dentist Kenneth Willstead prescribed over 800 hydrocodone pills between June 2013 and May 2014 to a personal friend. He also prescribed 30 30-day quantities of the sleep agent Zul Zulpidem tartrate and phenamine hydrochloride, a drug often prescribed for weight loss, to patients. According to the report, the prescribing of sleep aids in such large amounts by a dentist is highly unusual and was viewed as suspicious. Yeah, no shit. The investigation also found that prescribing phenamine hydrochloride was outside of the scope of practiced dentistry altogether. During an interview with Willstead on May 2nd, 2014, conducted by DPS, Willstead denied overprescribing but did admit to calling in the hydrocodone prescriptions outside regular business hours for his friend. During a second interview on May 5th, Willstead was questioned about his prescribing of phenamine hydrochloride to other friends and his personal use of both phenamine hydrochloride and zolpidem tartrate. Which, by the way, if you're super confused, we did a whole episode on Dr. Kenny Smiles, who he is, how we got here. He is an extreme weirdo. I strongly recommend you watch that episode because just the shit we had last time about him, I was like, oh my God. But now, again, it's getting criminal. So, yeah. Now it's getting to the stuff that he doesn't post himself. Yeah. I don't know how, but it keeps getting worse. Another verified patient of Dr. Kenny has reached out to me to share her excruciating encounters with Dr. Kenny that resulted in her needing surgery by a cardiothoracic surgeon Jesus. to remove 
dental fragments from her lungs. I what? This woman's identity concealed, similar to the other victims that we've talked about so far. This young woman flew out to Texas to have her teeth done by Dr. Kenny in August of 22. Unfortunately, but not shockingly, her first appointment was nothing less than traumatizing. During her appointment, Dr. Kenny's staff, overseen by Dr. Kenny, did mold impressions of her teeth and they left the mold in her mouth for 10 minutes until it was hardened. When staff went to remove the hardened mold from her mouth, it broke apart inside of her mouth and uh. this young woman breathed in a <gasps> fragment of this broken off mold, causing her to aspirate. Dr. Kinney and his staff were all aware that this woman was choking and had reason to believe that there was a broken off piece of the mouth impression stuck in her lungs. But Dr. Oh Kinney God. and his staff chose to do nothing. No x-rays, didn't send her to the ER despite the fact that she had just aspirated and was in discomfort. They just proceeded with her teeth. Now, this is where we're gonna get into some text messages between this young woman and Dr. Kenny. After her appointment, the two took a photo together with her temporary teeth, as Dr. Kenny does with many of his patients. But Dr. Kenny asked this young woman to send the photo to him, likely an attempt to get her personal phone number. This young woman sent the photo to Dr. Kenny's cell phone, and he later responded with, damn, you're hot as F. She did not respond to this, and then Dr. Kinney messaged her later saying, hey, just wanted to check on you, see how you're feeling. She did not respond till the next morning, but she was saying she was feeling all right, just some inflammation and discomfort. He then responded with a smiley emoji and then asking if he could push her 8 a.m. appointment back to 8.30 instead. So this was the day after her first appointment and she was going in to have her teeth looked at to make sure they were all good before she got back on a plane. And then she planned to return for her permanent teeth, obviously. Then Dr. Kenny said, if I get a undressed photo, I can wake up a lot faster, winky face. What the fuck? She did not respond to any of this and he just later responded saying, I'll see you at eight. After these two initial appointments, this young woman flew back home waiting for her permanent teeth to be ready. During this time, Dr. Kenny was sending her a lot of unsolicited messages, including unsolicited videos of him playing with his manhood and just weird videos of himself. I have all the receipts, but I'm running out of time. Go to part two. Oh my God. I'm gonna be honest, Lily. I didn't see part one, bitch. I am shook to the core. I did not see part one. What? First of all, it's like medical malpractice. Then you're a predator. I don't know which exactly. one to go to for. Like, like before, I don't think we've had any evidence of or like been made aware of anything he was doing that was fucking up their like health. Right, for sure. So that alone, um, just speaking from experience, going to the dentist and having those molds in your mouth, like I've never gotten it for what they're doing, but like to get impressions done, that already is so uncomfortable. I'm not very scared of the dentist. My husband is actually like, he's a full grown man, terrified of the dentist. And I know people like literally suffer just to like sit down and open their mouth and have those tools scraping their teeth and stuff. It's very hard for a lot of people. For me personally, it's not like I'm fine with it, but what the fuck? Like that's insane. So this young woman, uh, full disclosure is actually, she already Already filed the report with the medical board uh, of Texas. Good. So this is all being investigated and this is confirmed to be a patient of his and it's fucking, it gets way worse. I mean, that's really bad, but prepare to see uh, Kenny flirting on camera woman was waiting for it will haunt you tonight to done she obviously flew back home and throughout this time dr kenny was sending her unsolicited videos of his manhood and just weird videos in general and i'm going to show you some of the weird videos that he was sending i'm not going to show you the manhood ones obviously oh hey girl oh sir if you don't know how to wink don't <laughs> wink he said it's when you close both eyes right <laughs> he literally goes <laughs> honestly i can't be hating i don't know how to wink either but sir you're disgusting I done got my herb cut. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I miss you. Miss you? Not the fucking lip bite. He's what like, what the fuck is going on? Oh my god. Ew. 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 <laughs> It's worse than dick pics. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, well, she's about to show a dick pic, but it's gonna cover it. But it is his watch, his dog, his wedding band are all in the picture. Obviously I gotta censor this one a lot, but we can all see what's going on here. And um, 
Could you it's imagine your right dentist sending you this? I just want to say, obviously, like this is sexual harassment to the utmost degree. He is absolutely a fucking freak. And I'm only laughing at how disgusting he is, not at all at what he's doing. Because if I was this patient, I would be horrified. You got your molds in, you aspirated a fucking piece of it. You have your temporaries in, which again, like Chelsea Marie, who was one of his patients has spoken up about, like once you have your temporaries in, you're kind of a victim to them. Like you could find someone else, but- But even if you could, they're the ones that have your molds. Like they would have to share that with the dentist. Like your teeth are no longer the teeth. It's very complicated. It's gonna be a big process to have to switch dentists. And he absolutely it. takes advantage of that because he's a fucking freak. But oh my God, those videos, I'm so happy they got leaked because he needs to hide in shame forever. Mind you, besides the fact that he's fucking creepy and disgusting and so cringe, he's married and has children. I just, the lip bite, the no, no, way, like what he thinks he's like a teenager flirting. Like I, I'm like, asking this you're a creepy old man. Yeah. Photos of herself, undressed photos of herself. And every time she would decline and Dr. Kinney would begin to call her names and curse at her. When this young woman flew back in town for her final appointment, Dr. Kinney was requesting that she stayed in this specific hotel. I assume this is where he takes his victims slash patients regularly as it is just down the street from his office. But thankfully she had already booked her own hotel so she declined Dr. Kenny's offer to stay at the hotel that he chose for her. What? Right before what? her final appointment, Dr. Kenny sent over coordinates for her to meet him at before they went into the office. From what he sent, it looked like they were meeting up in a Walmart parking lot. Even though she felt uneasy about this, she didn't think she would be unsafe. But when she arrived to the location that Dr. Kenny had sent, she realized that she was at a cemetery. There was no one else around other than Dr. Kenny Smiles. Feeling concerned when she arrived that if she did not get out of her car to see what Kenny was wanting to do, that he would get angry and not finish her teeth. So reluctantly, she got out of her vehicle and walked over to Dr. Kenny. It was unfortunately at this time that Dr. Kenny allegedly kissed this young woman without her consent, grabbed her chest without her consent, and shoved his hands down her pants without her consent. Dr. Kenny then asked this young woman to go to the hotel that he had sent her earlier to go and sleep with him. This young woman declined. She just wanted to get her teeth finished and go home. The fact that this young woman would not sleep with him enraged Dr. Kenny and the two ended up going their separate ways, agreeing to meet at the office for her appointment. But Dr. Kenny soon called her to let her know that he was going to have to remake her permanent teeth and to come back the next day. The next day, this young woman went in to get her permanent teeth and she realized that her permanent teeth looked nothing like they were supposed to. They looked nothing like her temporaries and she was very unhappy with how her smile looked. And even though Dr. Kinney offered to give this young woman her money back, he never did. Go to part three. So she, she says the cemetery thing, but the text she has in the background, it's that he sent a link to a dropped pin. And she says, it took me to Williams and Garland Street to some shady looking house. And he goes, LOL, we ain't going inside any shady house. Just didn't want you pulling up to the office, LOL. Just a few minutes away. Love your lips, by the way. I could kiss you forever. Part three. After all of this and returning home, this young woman reached out to Dr. Kinney's office manager, Kayla, to share what had happened to her in her first appointment with the aspirating and the inappropriate situation that happened with Dr. Kenny. Kayla did not say much to this young woman's situation. She just offered her a partial refund. Nine months later, a after partial refund. consistent chest pain since her first appointment, where she aspirated on a piece of the hardened mold that broke apart in her mouth, she went to a cardiothoracic surgeon where she was x-rayed and told that she was going to need surgery. This cardiothoracic surgeon found a piece of de dental fragment lodged in this young woman's lung. I had to blur it out just because I was afraid it might get taken down, but I will put the unblurred version up on my story a nearly two inch dental fragment was pulled out of this young woman's lung and it was the fragment that she aspirated on at Dr. Kenny's office. Not only is Dr. Kenny a terrible person, he is a negligent dentist and he needs to have his license stripped. Jesus ASAP Christ. Whatever she aspirated looks Jesus. absolutely ginormous. I am positive because I know like from having kids, you're not supposed to give them popcorn until they're like six years old because if they aspirate on a tiny fucking popcorn kernel, it could kill them. Aspirating on anything and like 
inhaling it all the way into your lungs is life threatening, if not extremely painful. So the fact that she got it removed nine months later, I can't imagine like seriously how much pain she, she must have been in. Also, I can't imagine that that's the first time something like that's happened. No, like, just like the same thing with the sexual harassment. That's not the first time. Like he, I mean, we've talked about like the teeth he posts look good. But like there's plastic surgeons, for instance, who will use the best of the best of their results and then be fucking super negligent and horrible. I was just going to say, well, I mean, but like I doubt he posted the results of this one if she was that unhappy with it and it looked well, that bad. Also, like, I'm getting the vibe when he said, hey, instead of coming today for your appointment, come back tomorrow and I'm going to redo your permanence. I get the idea that because she didn't sleep with him, he fucked them up on purpose. That's definitely the vibe I get. Or just didn't try. I don't know. Best case scenario, he just fucked up because he's a bad dentist. Worst case scenario, he did it on purpose. Yeah, he's a fucking weirdo. There is a clip, we'll just throw it in here, but it is of him like hitting on that young girl's grandma. And he's literally like, oh, are we gonna fuck later? And she is so uncomfortable and like pissed. This is unbelievable. So just to set it up, uh, this was also found on Reddit and I don't know the full backstory, but from what the post said, uh, it is believed that this may be a minor and that she uh, said that she was homeless. And then this is her grandmother who walks into the room. And uh, just note all the things that Dr. Kenny just freely and openly says. It, it, it is astounding. All right, interview time. Since you see me on TikTok, you know what I do. Hey, photo bomber. Oh shit, that was a glare. Should have seen the fuck I the look I just got. It wasn't the kind of, I'm gonna fuck you later. It was the kind of, like, I'm gonna fuck you up later. Oh shit, is that your Nana? It sure is. Fucking hell, that could be a Billie Jean. Damn, she is my lover. Jeez. Damn, I wasn't expecting that. Sorry. I just, I just had a moment. You and I, you didn't know it, but I. Now that you're well informed. All right, so you know this piece of shit right here? Are you talking to me or her? I'm talking to you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know her. Okay. She didn't seem to not want to claim that title, so whatever. All right, Nana, we working on you today? Or oh, you're getting worked on today, too? Shit. Are we fucking? She just said yes. <laughs> I genuinely don't understand how he got arrested and continued to be able to practice. I find that strange. Yeah, that was my takeaway for the drug thing. I'm like, wouldn't, because it said that his license did get revoked, but it's like, but then reinstated? Yeah, like, how? I guess. I don't who, know. Who but I that? imagine, honestly, with all the evidence this girl has, because there's text messages, she had the surgery, it's all documented. Like, I would hope that this one case alone, if not all of the video evidence of all the times he's done shit like this, would be enough to get his license revoked. If not, like, be criminally charged he's a fucking menace i cannot but believe I, that he was a glorified tiktok dentist who helped like mama tot's followers he's awful well that's what i just can't wrap my mind around like how you would think that you would get away with this for so long like uh, both the negligent dentistry and him being a total creep like he just banks on everyone like being in too intimidated to say anything well yeah probably and also he puts them in situations where like what are they gonna do but like with so much proof like he's sending them like dick pics and stuff and at, like you think no one's gonna show i that? just don't think that people that are this fucked up have the same thought process that like you and i have like i don't think he even thinks that much into it i think he's driven purely by like some weird fucking creepy sexual lust and power hungry i don't know i don't know what his like motive is but I don't think he has the same like moral compass that oh, we have. Clearly. <laughs> but it it's weird because I feel like this happens a lot in situations like this that the, like the girl does not reciprocate at all and he still keeps going. Like, she does not, no. What, he doesn't ever take it. I feel like, like even us have experienced yeah. things like that. Like any woman or honestly even like if someone's a creep, they're going to be a fucking creep and you don't have to even encourage it. Like a simple answer is encouraging to these people. Like just the fact that you even text back 
is encouraging to them. And there's like a bunch of instances too where he does this to patients and then when they don't answer back at all, he like completely flips on them and gets very, very fucking upset. So it's just like, there's no shortage of people he's done this to. This one is the one that's like filed with the medical board, but so much more shit has come out where he's done this with so many people. Ugh, I don't even wanna know how many people he's actually slept with because I think personally, any person he slept with that was a patient of his, he should be criminally charged for. Yeah, like, well, absolutely. because honestly, we talk about power dynamics with celebrities, but that also exists on a spectrum because there is like positions of power with like, I mean, like policemen, for yeah, example. Yeah, absolutely. Or like Dennis, he does have, a, there is a power that he has over you because he is in control of what's going on in your mouth for your teeth. So these people, and I've said, even in the Ash and Mila thing, women in general, the second you challenge or like fight back against something, then you're a bitch and then they freak out. So often women will just kind of be like, okay, I'll just like grin and bear yeah. it. Yeah, no yeah. No pun intended, because we're talking about teeth. But like, it's just insane that he, I just, yep. like, they're literally, they're shutting up because they don't want to, like, have him fuck up their teeth. And then, look, he does it anyway. It's so <laughs> insane. He is the worst. And as far as him acknowledging everything. Oh, yeah. So on his latest TikTok, he, it was another patient transformation. And one thing that I really fucking hated is that he was hearting a bunch of comments, like, that were making fun of that woman's teeth. Which I'm like, have you fucking learned anything? I mean, no, no. of course you haven't. It's just thinking. It what? This oh, interesting. He has now that. reduced the comments. It says comments aren't available because you're not mutual friends with Dr. Kenny Smiles. So I guess only mutual friends are now allowed to comment. Oh. Or maybe that's why they were all positive. Wow. I was like, why does he have so many positive comments? Interesting. Oh, great. Uh, someone asked, when are you choosing the winners for your new TV show? And he responds, I will be scheduling interviews soon. Maybe fucking don't. The one where he's going to travel to the like different people like that. Oh, back in, we covered in the last video that he asked for a girl's address because he said he was going to go like do visits to the- No thanks. No, no, that's, that's unnecessary and weird. Now. So I can't find the comment right now, of course, because I forgot to screenshot it, lovely. But it was something like, and we'll find it and we'll put it here. Um, someone was saying like, you do such an amazing job and no matter what people say, like you're great at what you do type of thing. And they were referencing like what people are saying about them. And then there were comments under that that were like, you mean like sexually harass his patients? Like, have you seen what people are saying about him? But he responded to this person and said like, thank you with like the crying emoji, the two like watery eyes and was like, thank you so much. Like very much like accepting that compliment as probably exactly what he believes, which is like, I'm. Um, changing lives this is a situation where we cannot separate the art from the artist literally <laughs> your practice needs to be shut down there are other capable dentists oh my god there was this one uh tiktok that came out of a girl showing him like fat shaming her horribly like he was literally like laughing at her for even submitting to be in the show like there are so many instances where he's just fucking awful there are other people who are very talented in this field who don't abuse their patience or their power that deserves spots not him he needs to go away and they aren't doing it for tiktok fame yeah but um he i mean he's limited comments now he did it when i first saw his comments and i think he's realizing quickly that his little tiktok journey is uh slowing down and um yeah i don't know what he's gonna do from here obviously not address it because he doesn't give a fuck i just hope his license gets revoked and he can't do this anymore to anyone I'm else i'm just curious also like what like do his employees just think this is fine. Well, again, remember Chelsea Marie mentioned that he treats his employees like shit. So I don't know what they think, but I don't think they're being being treated very well either. But yeah, a lot of you guys were tagging me in the Dr. Kenny Smiles updates. So that's um that's kind of the most important one. But again, there is no shortage of updates of things that he's done because it's all kind of coming out. I literally, I just was about to say, there is no shortage of creepy, no. documented creepy behavior no, no. though. We can literally have like three more episodes on it. It's fucking insane. That's okay. But um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, we will leave you guys with that. Uh, so we can hopefully go and edit this episode so it'll be up on time woohoo it won't it won't <laughs> i just <laughs> oh, yeah we're filming late this week we only have a couple days she I, ruined Joyce Marcos us. just took she over really my did. life like literally i didn't sleep uh. one of the nights because i was editing the whole night which uh, in retrospect i feel like that never works out because while i am up editing the whole time i'm doing it so much slower than i would <laughs> if i had just gotten asleep because i'm like falling asleep during oh it. my but god that's the worst shit, I that hate was falling asleep definitely 
Someone had commented originally that that wasn't a rabbit hole, it's a cave, and they were very accurate in that description, so. But anyway, that's it. We'll leave you guys with that. And um, yeah, if you made it to the end, as always, we appreciate you. And I hope you have a great weekend. We will see you on Monday. Bye. And we're still looking for Halloween suggestions. Please leave them below. Oh my God, yes, please. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye.